first saw this trailer, I was freaking floored. I love sci-fi stuff, I love stuff to do with AI, and we get a little bit of both. This movie, Monsters of Man 2020, looks like an amalgamation of Chappie, or more so a prequel of Chappie, and District 9 with the feel. It's a weird mix of action thriller and sci-fi. And you may be wondering why this is in the dumb movie or low budget movie category. Well, it may be low budget or an indie film, but it definitely was impressive in terms of the quality of what we got. That being said, I want to go into reviewing this movie. Of course, I'm going to poke fun at it because there are issues with it, of course. There are issues with every movie, and I think only the top tier movies can have the least amount of issues, but still issues. If you're paying attention in the lead up to this moment, you may notice that the bullet holes from the man's gunshots are actually already in the wall while they're talking to Marvin, seconds before the man even takes aim. So, let's have a jolly old adventure with the monsters of man. Yeah, what the fuck? When I saw the trailer and having seen this movie, the first thing that came to my mind was Chappie. I mean, Chappie's whole summary for that movie is, in the near future, a mechanized police force patrols the streets and deals with lawbreakers. But now, the people are fighting back. When one police droid is stolen and given new programming, he acquires the ability to feel and think for himself. While the robot, now dubbed Chappie, puzzles out human behavior, the authorities begin to see him as a danger to mankind in order. They'll stop at nothing to ensure that Chappie is the last of his kind. I'm not kidding you, this is literally that in a nutshell. The setting for this movie takes place at the Cambodian and Vietnamese border. Yeah, so right where those two meet. As you can imagine, people here are very far from home. That means a whole bunch of government testing from the United States can happen here and nobody would know about it because there's already a lot of illegal shit going on here too. Things are immediately bumped up when we see a pretty girl running through the forest and is immediately shot down. First thing people would probably think if they didn't see the poster and didn't see the trailer and stuff is that, it, you know, she got herself into some shit. The poor girl obviously doesn't belong there and she either saw something that she wasn't supposed to see or went somewhere she wasn't supposed to go. <laughs> but nope, that is a freaking robot. There's no begging for her life. There is no mercy. There's no nothing. Obviously, this thing has an objective. But why is she being shot down? Honestly, looking back at it after I've watched this movie, I have no idea why they decided to add that in. It would have been better if they just never did that. I never understood the point of that because the trailer literally gives you that. In the movie is a few hours earlier or a few days earlier. You don't need to put another piece of the trailer before the movie when we already had the trailer to tell us what happened. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. That was a really poor choice, in my opinion. The camera turns to a man overlooking what's happening through the robot while this girl's begging for her life. And then it gives us a PSA. Yeah, um, so you people watching, like, robots and artificial intelligence are seriously bad. So... Make sure that you watch this movie and be fucking scared, like terrified, like, I mean, terrification. Look, I get it. There are dangers of the artificial intelligence. This went really fast paced near the end for this movie, but I get it. The same reason why I guess, you know, it makes sense that we logically be rightfully so, primitively so, terrified of making contact with aliens that have technology like us or possibly way more advanced than us. It's the equivalent of a mouse going into a lion's cage and saying, hey, I knew I wasn't alone. Hey, look at me, I'm right here. Hey, we're not alone, right? Now you know I exist. The lion's probably gonna be like, hello there. Now I know you do exist. Except for us, it would be like the mouse calling the lion and leading it back to the nest where all the other mice are and they can't escape if a lion were to come to their community. You know what I mean? So I get it, but that little blurb at the beginning wasn't really needed either. Like I said, the whole first part was just completely unnecessary because the movie speaks for itself. Everyone else get that danger vibe that they want to mind-numbingly shove down into your spine and your memories? I hope you remember this. I hope you remember that artificial intelligence is a thing.
Okay, we can laugh because, you know, it's just the beginning. But that very well could be leading up to what we're going to see in this movie. Then we have a whole other problem. Okay, so I guess I get why that would be concerning, you know. Let's not be naive either. Most of the revolutionary pieces of technology usually go to the military first. You know, all the iPhones and satellite phones and stuff that you think is revolutionary and they just come out. Oh, this is great. Military's probably had them for over a decade. So just pretend that everything that you have, because you don't really have to pretend, that's usually the case. Every piece of technology that you now have at your fingertips, the military has had their hands on it for way longer than that. Just as a less fancier version, just purely functional and not really aesthetic. The opening credits of the movie are kind of like code. You see a group of people dropped off. Discount Christian Slater, Mr. Robot here. Seems to be the only one who is rightfully terrified as to what may be going on here. See, from what I gather, these people are in bed with the weapons industry and they're being told that they need to go to this Cambodia Vietnamese border site so they can test out their weapon stuff that they help design. Just like nuclear testing in the dunes, right? Nothing bad or weird about that. Put a freaking window. Hey, it's it's great. And that is where my ass would be puckering, right around that time. I mean, way before that, I wouldn't even mean that situation. I wouldn't be working for a company like this because, you know, I'm not crazy. I know that when I make stuff like this, the government has my ass spread wide. Its tongue can enter and leave at its own will. And if it feels like it needs to tear it open a little wider, it's gonna do that. And if I fight, I will die. I really don't know what these people were expecting to happen. But let's just say I was stupid enough to discount all of that and my hopes and dreams were in the forefront of my ambitious mind. And I was like, wow, I am doing the good for mankind by making freaking weaponized robots that obviously the military are gonna use, you know, to protect us. I'm high on life. I feel great going into freaking Cambodia. And I am just, you know, <laughs> this is great. Operating under circumstances that nobody else is ever supposed to know. No civilian. I'm not a part of the military. I'm a civilian. There are other programmers and engineers out there too. So there's no possible way that they would ever dispose of me in the back neck of the freaking asshole of the world, right? But right around the time I would see Mr. Hulk Hogan over there, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger from the first Terminator movie, Mr. My breast muscles are bigger than your ass muscles combined. The minute I even saw him, I would be like, hmm, that's awkward, but I get it. We need bodyguards. Then he takes up the gun when I start bitching about something that, you know, is warranted in a threatening, brandishing manner. Then I would be like, huh, he's a bit too antisocial for my taste. And I understand that this is his job, but I don't like feeling like I have a spiritual gun to my head without it actually being pointed at me yet. Fine. See, this girl knows. You can see the gears turning in her little small head. What am I doing here? This was a bad idea. I'm gonna die here. What's gonna happen to me? What are we really here for? Why is this guy acting so freaking shady? One thing I have to say about this movie, if I don't give it praise for anything else, is the movement of the robots. Holy crap, the, the robots. Even when I saw the trailer, I was like, God damn, that looks terrifying. The way they design these robots to look like robots and to move like robots is just astounding to me. It's so well done. I am so thoroughly impressed. And if you don't like anything else about this movie, that is the one thing that you will like. So these robots are loaded onto a military plane and they're gonna be taken to that remote part in the jungle. We already know they're gonna be off killing people and that somebody else was watching this happen and had no problem with it, which freaking spoiled that part of the movie. Like I said, bad idea. But since we were already privy to that information, there must be something more to this, right? The programmers or engineers set up shop. And while they do, overgrown masculine chest meat makes a call to a specific person. The same guy that we saw witnessed that American girl get killed by the robot that he was watching through, like through its eyes. And guess what? This guy works for the CIA. You see, they're not just doing testing in this remote area. Oh no, they're doing testing all right, but they have an actual objective that they're using these robots for, a real bona fide field test, which involves flesh meat being skewered. 
Unfortunately, the robot programmers and engineer people that are being micromanaged now did not sign up for that. Here we meet the girl and her little boy and of course, some white American man. We all know what's going to happen here, don't we? Even though this chick already is married and has a husband, yeah, he's a criminal, but still the father of the kid, still the husband. <laughs> Bitch, the fuck are you doing? Your nasty ass. Look, I get it. Maybe she didn't have a say in the matter. I don't know what the whole backstory was. The husband does seem to respect her because when he tells her something later on, like, he, okay, I don't want to spoil too much too fast, but she basically says, no, fuck you. I'm doing this. And he's like, no. And she's like, yeah. And he's like, huh. So obviously it's not where he's like abusing his wife or anything. Like she obviously has her own mind, has her own opinions. So I don't think she was forced into this relationship with him. I think she wanted power. And then a white American man came along and then she looked at it as a new type of power. Cause I'm not even gonna, cause you know, we know we're adults. Don't get offended. It's shit that really does happen. Okay. The old GC is very, very alluring to a lot of people, both male and female from countries like this, where I understand there's a lot of crime and laws are kind of askew. So I get it. However, I think it a bit stupid for you to be doing this around a whole field of kids that can witness this and then go back and tell all their fathers, which rolls with your kid's father, who are freaking basically like this region's version of the freaking cartel. What are you doing? It sucks. And even in mafia movies, I've seen it happen where the males can go around and have their gulas or whatever. And the females, you know, you, you have to be way more quiet because if you try to do the same thing, all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose and that's not allowed because it is what it is. The females can get pregnant, you know, when that males don't bring back anything home. The females have the possibility of that happening. It sucks. It's not equality. But if you have a kid in the mix, why would you risk? Like, I don't know. I don't blame her wholly, though, because she does see this big, muscular, you know, Viking-like guy with the beard, and he used to be a soldier, and he's a good man, and he's working on her house, and he's muscular, and, and, and I'm okay. Anyway, she's really nice to him, and he's obviously carrying a lot of guilt. His stopwatch keeps going off and that seems to represent something. Anyway, let's fast forward to the real nitty gritty of everything. Right before all the action starts, we see a whole bunch of tourists, or at least we think they are. It turns out that they are doctors in training. And to the left, you see the pretty girl that was running at the very beginning and you know that something bad's gonna happen to her because she gets shot in the freaking spleen. So thanks for spoiling that. That would have been a lot more surprising and effective in terms of the immersion if we didn't know what was gonna happen to her, but we know she's dead. She's either gonna bleed out, where's her hospital nearby there and yeah she's surrounded by a whole bunch of doctors and training but not the right equipment or knowledge or experience so we know that she dies at some point then being here is a whole case of wrong place at wrong time and we're soon gonna figure that out real quickly the movie starts to go from zero to 60 when the engineer people realize that they're in over their heads and what they thought they were going for was actually the complete opposite see this isn't a test they're using their robots for an outright mission the moment was thought up <laughs> In the habit of knocking. Are we connected? Yes. You don't even have any family there. You can't go to the authorities. You know how stranded you must feel in that situation? Just putting your total trust in the government like an idiot. The doctors in training, being stranded there themselves, think that they're getting help when they see a military plane or some kind of aircraft carrier dropping some supplies. In this situation, you're actually hoping that the plane does not see them. Everyone is seeing them at this point. And funny enough, these people will all end up connected. Leap, the cheating woman's boy, and the ex-Navy SEAL guy. There are four robots in all, and as they are all dropped from the air, one of them doesn't really make it. Its chute doesn't open, and um, well, let's just say it's not having a really good first day on the job. Well, it's landed. That robot that landed is number four. And number four is going to have an interesting, interesting time in this movie. You see, what's so perplexing about this movie is I love it. I love this movie to death, mind you. But they keep making stuff up as they go along. Because you see these 
creatures, sorry, robots have modules in their head. These modules connect to the internet. It allows them to be controlled by the humans that we see here. And apparently without the module, uh, they don't have an AI cap. If I'm misunderstanding, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but something happens and if something's broken on the robot, apparently there's no AI cap so it can just learn indefinitely and become its own thing. And I'm just like, why would you even make something with a cap on it? Like, like the cap should be built in. There shouldn't be a cap coming off. It just seemed a little bit easy, too easy the way they explained it for the AI cap or the learning cap to come off. Why would you even make something like that? Oh, because we can. Okay, well, that that's usually how movies like this end up with the screaming and running and you get where I'm going with this. Well, can you guess what happens? In layman's terms, they have two brains, okay? One is the module that caps their artificial intelligence that allows us to communicate with them. So in segments, we're gonna get Discount Christian Slater here telling us exactly how the robots work because I don't want to miss interpret or misspeak so you're gonna hear him talk about you know certain things that should make sense but us as the audience having watched all the other sci-fi horror movies know exactly why all those things are bad ideas they're cute on paper but putting them against people and in the real world seems a bit too dangerous to leave up the chance especially with the first test where there are villages and other people there i'm guessing the programmers didn't know this because as far as they're concerned this is a remote jungle where there's no people they also got the okay that the area was, in quotations, cleared. I really do hope that in the future, my paws will be able to do that quotation thingy. The module also allows them to make the best decisions in the field possible, whether that be jumping off a cliff or not, or when would be the appropriate time to pull out a gun? Ha! <laughs> ah, the self-driving car situation. You know, we all have to make sacrifices for the advancement of technology even at the mercy of human lives, because it is just something that happens. I'm really not trying to be sarcastic. It is, it is what it is. You know how many puppies and kittens and rats had to die for us to get the medicine that now breaks our bodies, but fixes that one little thing by breaking nine other things? But it fixes that one little thing though. They did figure it out or acted like they did. Not like there were places in the foreign worlds, you know, my country being one of them, that have a whole bunch of natural things that heal people and have been healing people for a while, or just good old natural selection and breeding the correct genes and people that survive were strong. No, that couldn't possibly be better. I just have to wonder, like, at, at what point does a medical advancement and technology advancement become harmful to mankind? And I just feel like it's the same thing with artificial intelligence. Even though it is cool to watch on TV, um, I don't really want to leave chance up to a robot because there's just so many things that could be misinterpreted. You could be running down the road with your hoodie and a phone in your hand, but the, the phone and the light hits it a certain way, the robot thinks it's a gun and it's like, oh shit, snap that person in the head. It doesn't have that thing to say, hey, what are you doing? What is that? Let me walk up and assess since, you know, humans can't kill me so easily. I don't have to worry about my life. Too many variables, like what if it gets hacked? What if it hits its head if it slips or something and then its shit goes haywire and it decides to slice off people's legs and wears them? We can pretty much get them to do whatever it is that we want them to do, but ultimately they will decide the best and most efficient way of doing what it is that we want them to do. Why are you leaving so much up to them to decide? Like, it just mistakes are made this is too too i don't know to be fair these guys thought that these robots were alone in the jungle they have to test them but you have to also give them real world circumstances what were they gonna do shoot trees what exactly did these engineering programmers think they were gonna do with these robots and testing them let's just what the, let them walk around a little bit and just sniff out the terrain and leaves and yeah just just Minecraft creation mode. Like, what did you think was gonna happen? Like to really, really understand what these robots are up against, you have to put test subjects over there, things that they think are alive. They obviously have the ability to scan the human language and human faces. So it's just an odd test to me. On the programmer's fault, on the programmer's side, I just find it a bit odd that they were so naive to the point they didn't realize what this test was actually going to be. It's not like a nuclear bomb. You, you can't just put it there and say, hey, I wonder how far this explosion radius is gonna be or how it's gonna affect the life, the, the wildlife in that area. And these robots are literally built to interact with people and to know what to do in circumstances involving other living things. 
So, I don't know. That part's a bit shady for me. So they make their own decisions. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, look at these robots. How full-blown AI. Okay, so they are way smarter than any of us. And that, my friends, on the Magic School Bus ride is about the time where we would get off because it's so intelligent to build something that is way smarter than you. And you may say, hey, Altiori, but our iPhones can go and do equations for us and shit. Yeah, but your iPhone is not left with the decision as to whether or not to pull out a gun on you or stomp your fucking head in. Your iPhone can't kill you by squashing your skull into pieces. Your iPhone can't step in front of your car and slice it in half because you're going at a certain speed and it's such an immovable object as a big old freaking robot that could cause you to lose your life and total your car. You can easily turn off your iPhone if you have to. If the robot decides that he doesn't want you touching him or he wants to run the fuck away, that's gonna be a little bit more of a bigger problem. You see where I'm getting at? So maybe at this point in time, what we're seeing here, maybe it's not the best idea. You may say, well, these robots are in a jungle, so it's not really that bad. And I initially thought the same thing, except it is more easy for them to get fucking lost in the jungle and then find their way to somewhere else and start causing mayhem. Then the shit is out of the bag and it's stinking up the entire environment. I swear to goodness, the people in these movies are so freaking stupid. And the entire movie, they are constantly losing control and freaking out and making shit up as they go along. Anyway, the doctor dudes make their way to the village and ask for help. The only person that can speak Vietnamese asks the girl if she can assist them. Then the American guy shows up and he's like, yeah, I'm here. You guys can speak English. How convenient. The wife is okay with letting him stay there, but her husband is not. It's very clear also by the interaction that she has. She's just like, ugh. She, she doesn't even care. She's not scared of this man. He's not going to hurt her. He obviously loves his wife, but we're scared for the Americans because he will hurt them. However, it doesn't seem as though he actually wants to hurt them, which is a good thing, because in some of those places, they would just shoot you. You're in their neck of the woods. No one's coming to find you. Pop, pop, double tap. Okay, boys, let's take it easy. You shut up! You're not one of us! Notice how differently he treats this guy than those other guys. Like, he's not really totally mean to everyone else. But when one of them tries to step up, just like that Navy SEAL guy did, he quickly let them know that they should not be doing that. I think because this American fixes their houses and he's basically their pet, he's basically like, okay, look, you you just tuck, be tuck the tail between the, you know, the iron. Let me talk to these guys over here. The other beard ponytail guy is like, okay, I'm gonna try to do that too. And he gets a gun to the face. So his wife steps up and she's like, okay, okay, you know what? I, I just said that they're staying with me for the night. So shut your ass up. But he still has to look bad for his homies. <laughs> Shut up! You're all gone! Or I'll kill you! Meanwhile, she's like, shut your bitch ass up. You ain't gonna do a thing, unless I say so. <laughs> the morning comes, and of course, everyone's been antsy. The lovely leading lady tells everyone that her son can help lead them out of the forest back to their van. That's the most they can do, which really doesn't make any sense, because then they're still stranded, so... Unless you're gonna drive on the rims. That's what I would do. I don't really understand why people who can't go over a certain point just don't go back or if their tires are pop why don't you just drive on the freaking rims yeah it will mess up your car but it's not like you can get new tires anywhere close so what the hell are these guys doing in cambodia okay whatever then aside from the engineers we get our first display of some classic stupidity by the leading characters this guy's a navy seal maybe the tattoo's fake you know, I know there are people like that who try to pretend that they were soldiers, which I don't really get why people do that. You can only go so far with that lie. Then you meet real soldiers and they start questioning you. What do you say? But there is no reason to grill this guy. He had the tattoo. He didn't announce himself as a naval officer or a Navy SEALs guy. He was just minding his own business. He was just an expat, just minding his own business. People needed someone that spoke English. This guy popped up. And now this douchebag is acting like a class A internal whale anus. I think this guy's full of shit. The Navy SEAL guy is like, look, I told you to stop, not talk and not to approach them. You didn't listen to me. You decided to hoist your balls in the air and wave them at a freaking bull that was raging. And this is his reply. And I am so sorry for people who have to deal with idiots like this. Well, I think a real Navy SEAL, a real SEAL, could have handled that situation. Okay. Stop. Yeah, little boy blue bitch. Let's see how you handle fighting a Navy SEAL. You're so big and bad, you couldn't handle that situation yourself. You're just mad because you got your ass beat. 
mercilessly in front of your girlfriend. And now you're making yourself look like a bigger ass. The little boy needs to take his little tight ass man bun and go sit down somewhere. God almighty, I can't stand this character. He's not like that the entire movie, but this was a horrible first impression. Anyways, the engineers are back and just now learning that something is definitely afoot with what they want to do with their robots. Definitely didn't look like simulation. There's some questionable code in there. These guys they're working for that want to do a quote unquote test have basically uploaded their own version of their mission objective. The robots get right on that. And when they discover that there are weapons in there. Recon first. The order to secure and take over the site will come from above. Would have been nice you telling us that before sending us out here. The little kid in the red shirt named Liap, he goes to the site where he and his friends saw those things drop from out of the sky. They don't know that they're robots. They have no idea what they're about to awaken. Of course, they're frightened and a bit apprehensive when they realize there's this big metal man lying on the ground. And about you guys, my first thought was, oh my God, these kids are going to get blasted to all smithereens because they have what could be construed as a gun. And then of course, because everybody is so clearless in this universe, the kid bends down and takes out the very thing that's supposed to cap the AI on the robot. This thing, Chaw, is what allows the robot to be told what to do by the humans who are yay someplace away off yonder. Otherwise, as they literally said earlier on in the movie, it will become self-aware. Again, I'm having a hard time with my line of reasoning as to why people would create something like a flamethrowing oven with legs and arms and the ability to wield weapons to have a cap capable of being thrown off if something as simple as this module being broken or not being in its head case is so easy and such a high probability of happening. It just, their logic astounds me. They're able to make something like this. <laughs> it never once occurs to them that, hey, um, little hard drive thing that you slip and slide into the monster's head back. Yeah, what if someone drop kicks the thing from above or a car slams into it and the hard drive exits? What happens? Oh, they just become self-aware based on their new environment and just make up their own decisions and we can't communicate with them ever. So, yeah. <laughs> Good times. Okay, see, and that's why, that's why, that's why you, that's why you, that's. <laughs> this robot is number four, and all he's trying to do is figure out what he is. He's aware that the kid has his module, and uh, that's about it. He doesn't know what his objective is. As far as he's concerned, he's just existing and has no idea how to exist. These are the first interactions he's having as a free man, a robot. When you wake up in another body and you realize your brain's missing. Okay, maybe it means something slightly different to him, but that's just the first thing I thought of. The little boy goes to tell his father what he found in the forest. Father doesn't believe him. Because you know, why would you believe your child? And why would you not recognize what a piece of advanced tech looks like? So of course the kid does what he's gonna do. He knows it came from that stupid robot thing. And he also told his father that that robot also got up on its two legs and did its own thing. Should have added that part. That makes it a lot more hard to believe. He puts the module in his pocket. Hey, no. The boy will take you to the track. I really think this is really nice because it seems almost like he's trying to protect them. But no, he's also trying to protect his assets. But you can tell he's a decent human being because like I said, this neck of the woods, usually people don't even bother talking to you. They don't threaten you. They don't talk twice. They don't even let you speak or breathe when you see them. They just bullet to the throat hole and that's it. That's the end of it. Bury you in some gully somewhere or feed you to a pig farm or dissolve you in the village urine. I don't know. The fact of the matter is he was willing to let these guys walk. Because, of course, this man is a drug lord along with his friends and they're trying to protect themselves as well from people seeing their big plantation of drugs. I forgot what they're making, some white powdery stuff. Apparently, this is the objective and they give the robots the go-ahead to fire on these guys. They also mention that there's some unarmed people, some unarmed women, or all unarmed women, and children. And the guys at the CIA are just like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, just, um... Just, that doesn't matter. <laughs> this ain't the United States. Fire. <laughs> that guy literally didn't even know what hit him. He was dead before he hit the floor. A whole bunch of carnage and mayhem happens at the hands, foot, feet, metal orifice of the robots. A little boy gets shot and that's how you know shit is real. I know it's a running gag by now, but I can respect when movies take that liberty to actually off the youth. No one is safe. No mercy. No nothing. For me, that hits harder. 
the Navy SEAL guy's like, whoa, whoa, hold up, hold up, please wait, because he was being shot at as well. The guys who are overseeing this whole thing at the CIA are like, wait, is that one of our guys? I don't know why they care, because the others are American citizens, and they dispose of grunts all the time, so I don't know why they would care that this man is a Navy SEALs officer. Even if he was one of their guys, they have proved that they don't really care. If you're in the way of the objective, you're getting mowed down. So the fact that they stood up here and let the robot kind of hibernate and hang out for a few seconds for five whole minutes, that was just plot armor and a plot device to help the main characters have a running start from the robots. Who the fuck is this guy? Why do you care again? Why do you care? That's just proof the robots are on pause. Time to get up and go away. This is the start of CIA guy's troubles. He didn't know all those American citizens were there. Oh, it's only a problem if they're American. Oops, no, it's not. He ends up mowing them down too because now they're witnesses and he has to kill them. Even though around this time, nobody had video phones or cameras, but that's okay. The group gets split up and this is what happens. <laughs> You see, this part is kind of sad, but is such a cheap shot what they do here next. Because, you know, it could kind of speak for itself after a certain point, but they just had to rub it into the audience that these people are the purest people ever. They go to these places to help people, to get knowledge so they can become doctors and save the world. Just look at how this scene plays out and how the woman actor, which I think is one of the weaker actors of all of them, the member of the engineering team, just look at how it plays out. She has to narrate everything so that you feel extra bad about what's gonna happen to this poor girl. Here she is, she's a doctor. Notice how she's getting all emotional and it's tugging at her heartstring while the tense music is playing in the background, letting you know that this shit's still gonna happen. This cute little thing, it's gonna get squashed. They're all doctors, they're here in a good cause. And she's got a drug runner, she's a and this is where you cue to be very sad, like the In the Arms of the Angel commercials that always play. You know, more people would be reached if they didn't reuse that goddamn song to the point where people hear it, it makes them feel like they're dying from secondhand smoke. Trust me, seeing an animal suffer in and of itself is sad. But if you want to grasp the emotional strings of people, use some different songs once in a while. There's so many beautiful sad songs out there you could use. Jesus Christ. I don't know why the second time around I find that funny. It's not funny, but you you guys wear where I'm coming from. It's the evil. It's not that you would want that to happen or that it's funny that it's happened. It's just the way that they made it look and like the questionable sound that it made. Of course, the team is now concerned as to whether or not that's going to happen to them. Seeing somebody else killed and seeing the fact that these guys are so ready to off innocent people makes them feel like they're on the chopping block. The big beard guy is like, yeah, no, they, they need us. That wouldn't happen. But bubble bursted. Everyone's expendable, big boy. Even you three geniuses. Well, that line alone means that none of them are going home, especially since they are so far from it. Not to mention no one's supposed to know where they are. This dude is the next to go. And it's not looking so hot because he was trying to find his way out of there, jumped down and slipped and then broke his freaking leg. One of those breaks where you can see the bone sticking out the front of your leg. So he can't run even if he wanted to. The majority of the rest of this movie is just cat and mouse between the humans and the robots. <laughs> the movie's greatest strength lied within its suspense. And how creepy these robots moved and also the discovery and the concept of the AI being uncapped, of this robot learning what he is for the first time and trying to discover. The number four robot who doesn't have his module installed and has his AI capped off, meaning the sky is literally the limit for his potential, that is, can be seen exploring the things around him. The dude straight up took a human body and dissected it and held the brain and heart trying to figure out what it was. Every time the engineers try to hook back up into this thing, he plays hard to get and proves that he is in fact smarter than they are, which he continues to do throughout the entire movie. So they decide the best course of action is to use the other robots to take him down. By the way, the Navy SEAL is so badass, he used the mine to blow up one of the robots. So with the exception to the one that's gone off the handle, there are only two left. <laughs> one of the saddest moments for me has to be when Liap, the little boy, is trying to stop all the killing. He feels like it's his fault, especially when his dad gets shot, that the robot, or metal men as he calls it, are angry. Chop! Chop Liap! Chop Liap! kid has the module. You don't say. And wasn't his mom just in the shot with him right after he was talking? How is it that 
in the one shot before uh, she's there. And then as they're looking at it live, she's magically disappears. And this is where the fun begins because this is where I'll start to pick apart the entire movie. This robot by now has the intel that this guy is a Navy SEALs or ex-Navy SEALs officer. Why is he just throwing him and tossing him around? You could have easily taken the guy's arm and ripped his hand off and made him bleed to death or crushed his head or punched him in the head or any one of those things, but it chose to toss him away. Also, Man Bun here takes up a weapon, starts firing at the robot. The robot's just like, try me, bitch. Mind you, these robots, as the engineer said himself, are way smarter than any of us. So shouldn't these robots also assess the kind of weapon they're using, how many rounds that weapon has, and when they're out of ammunition? <laughs> How convenient was that for the plot? The military droid forgot that he was out of bullets. I'm guessing that's why that robot got blown up. Because when he's walking and he sees that there's a difference in the terrain with something that's easily identifiable as a landmine sticking above ground at a weird angle, if a human could see that and say, that's freaking weird as fuck, especially with something out there trying to target me, I'm gonna stay away from that. No, the robot doesn't see that at all. The robot is in his own world of cockiness. way smarter than any of us. Then the saddest part comes. It doesn't matter which show I watch, which sect of Asian it is, they always have their child actors down to a T when it comes to crying. I swear to goodness, Korean, Japanese, doesn't matter what it is, the Asian children know how to freaking cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel so bad for that kid. That dad, yeah, he was a criminal, but he loved his family and he died protecting his son and his wife. It's really sad because I kind of got to like the guy just because I saw how he was with his family. You see some guy like this, he probably does some horrific things when he's not at home to other people and other women. But when he's at home, he's the real MVP. And you can see how much this kid looked up to his father. Not to mention this criminal guy also led the students or the doctor students when they got separated, he led them back to the village safely. He could have been like, deuces, let me shoot you guys so you can't walk, so you're a nice little distraction so my son and I can get away. He didn't do that. He actually led everyone back. So there is hope for him yet, but it doesn't matter because now he's dead. And Liap has to go with the others because he's the only one who knows his way around the forest and how to get back on the main road. Every time they're trying to stop the AI robot who's gone rogue, it's just bad stuff starts happening. This thing just keeps outsmarting them, trying to upload to their servers, trying to hack their stuff. And they're like, whoa, oh my God. They have to keep killing the connection just to stop this thing from getting their information or doing whatever the hell it's planning on doing. So they employ the other robots to try and kill this thing. And I like how this thing maneuvers and the way it moves and hides and ducks and dodges. The engineers are like, what? the f what? yo we made this yo dog we made this and it's acting like a freaking ninja which is something that they did not program it to do it somehow learned to do that on its own because i guess it doesn't want to get its hardware damaged so it doesn't engage since it doesn't have a weapon of course there's no contest and our robot number four quickly disengages the other robot and remember the female engineer that was in the office? She decides that she's going to go right outside of where they are stationed to go make a phone call to her husband. Like, what, what, what is she thinking? I don't even understand the logic of some of these characters. I know that people would act like this in the real world, but for real, if you know these people are dangerous, why would you call your husband so now that he's a target as well? She doesn't even go to the ladies' room. She doesn't go around the corner. She's right outside. Well, Ann, Ann, calm down, what's wrong? Yeah, Ann, you killed your husband. You killed him. She tries to run out of there. She's not getting out of there. I mean, there's a million places you could run and hide. And like, you could just kneel down and crawl under some people and go into a whole bunch of places. But no, she's freaking out and running. See, this is why hide and seek is such an essential game when you're growing up. Even better yet, level 12, my version of hide and seek melded with tag. I can't be the first one who's thought of that, but it's even better. Tag and go seek, hide and go tag. Essential games that could literally save your life. And in this situation, if she knew how to do that, she'd still be alive. No, but she gets a knife in her back and she has to go and sprain her freaking ankle as she's running up the stairs. Like, 
Also, keep yourself in mint condition because you never know when you're going to have to outrun a freaking military person with a human steak knife. Johnny Bravo for the CIA up there realizes that she's making a phone call and he's like, why would you be so stupid? Doesn't really matter because they're all going to die anyway. And of course, the husband has to hear his wife be chased down and killed only to later be killed himself. Last bits of what he hears is his wife in total terror, someplace around in Timbuktu, unable to do anything, only to try and make a call for him to get killed himself. Because, of course, in situations like this, the government usually has eyes on your family as well, so you can be compelled to do what they need you to do if the time arises. Like the nosy Kermit who didn't mind his own business in some alternate universe, the lady should just sat down and sipped her freaking tea. I absolutely love this movie, but it was so infuriating, the last bits of it, because people know these robots are stalking them, and yet they continue to make noise yelling over to each other so the robot knows your location, which makes no sense to me. My favorite part of the movie was enjoying watching the robots stalk people like a freaking spiritual dinosaur. Like all the places you think you'd be able to hide from a robot, you cannot hide from these ones. And the way they creepily and stealthily move is just freaking bizarre. I'm filling my water with cum! Anyway, they take a rest from the robot hunting them for a while in a cave. Layup's mother, the girl who was sweet on the American, the one who was already married, she's of course dying a very slow death because she's internally bleeding. She got hit by the shrapnel from the explosion when the thing tried to detonate itself. Oh yeah, these things have a self-destruct feature. The one that got blown up by the Navy SEAL guy, they basically said, okay, well, while he's still there in the vicinity beating this thing to death, um, self-destruct it and blow up everything within a certain mile radius. All the innocent people, innocent bystanders, villages nearby, doesn't matter, blow it up. A lot of the people survived, but she got hit by shrapnel and it went deep inside her and <laughs> ooh la la. Sound impossible? Not anymore. We're down to two robots, as I've said before, and you have an opportunity. These people actually had an opportunity to off one of the robots, but oh no. Stupidity starts to become the new logic for these characters as the movie progresses, and I have no idea why. I don't know why they couldn't have written this better. It was just this part, and they try to reason that, oh, you shouldn't fire your gun in the cave, but dude, oh my god, you couldn't move the weapon from the robot either. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Hey, you little fuck! <laughs> Okay, so he's running in a ridge that he had fallen into. His logic is if he runs past this ridge, the robot will fall and get stuck because of its weight, which does happen. You didn't, you didn't survey your terrain, Mr. Robot, you know, but you know, main objective priority is to kill the humans. And why did you have to be so far? You, I mean, you had the gun all this time. The guy's in front of you. Why did you not? Why were you not aiming your whatever? Take a look at all the instances where the robot cannot reach its freaking weapon. Have you noticed this? A Navy SEALs officer guy. Why are you leaving the Oh my fucking God. Then he just, then he just bounces. Holy shit, dude. I don't understand. Maybe, mm, I was gonna say something mean, but you know, whatever. <laughs> oh my God. Like the first thing I would think is, first of all, you didn't kill the thing. It never once occurred to you to pick up a boulder or a rock nearby and fucking ounce this thing's head into the freaking rock since, you know, it's lodged in there. But let's just say for argument's sake, for very stupid argument's sake that, oh, I don't want to dislodge it by accident, which, you know, likely wouldn't happen because the weight is holding it tethered into that area. And you even said to yourself, you don't know when the thing is going to get loose. So, um, here, here's a clue. <laughs> and it's very, it's fucked up because, you know, why don't you take the weapon, you know, that's like, out of its reach, obviously, and uh, turn it on the robot and shoot it. Like, I don't understand. Just keep shooting it until something pops. And even if you can't use the gun, let's just say for, for some fricked up reason they can't use the gun, take it away. I don't understand why you, oh God. Then he comes back with the group and he's like, this is a way that we can get out, you guys. Let's all, you know, without, without any reasoning power whatsoever, just play a game, don't fall into the lava, and just avoid the robot swinging hand while its weapon is like right by its head, which we've left there for no fucking reason. I mean, I feel like I'm watching one of those commercials where people are just like perpetually stupid. <laughs> ah! 
Says the soldier who didn't disarm the robot, even though he had the full ability to do so because the robot couldn't reach his weapon and the soldier left it there. So if the robot dislodges itself, it has his weapon right beside it. Are you tired of fussing with giant pasta pots, strainers, timers, stirring and testing? I swear, it's like the characters suddenly became those people from those stupid infomercials. They're so hard to watch. So amazingly hard to watch that you don't even take it seriously that they're actually trying to sell a product and you don't buy it because of the stupidity. Rich coming from the Navy SEAL guy who left the weapon there telling the other guy that he's gonna get everyone killed because he's putting a bullet in the robot so it doesn't get them, which is something, oh my God. Okay, for, for, that, that, was, that was a part of the movie for me that was just like, really, really, bro? Did you switch writers near the end? I love this movie and it's amazing. I really enjoyed it, but goddamn. And because the guy couldn't finish it off, look, the, the robot's still there filling its arms around. And when it gets free, it's going to get its weapon and come back and kill a whole bunch of people. Good job. You all deserve to die. Near the end of the movie, Four meets up with the humans and has an existential crisis. He basically asks them what's life and why is it important. He basically asks the soldier, well, why do you kill and take life if life is important? And the soldier's like, I was just taking orders. They have this whole conversation that makes this robot think, huh? Maybe, maybe life is important. That part was a bit rushed, but this was the concept the entire time. And I feel like it was a really wonderful concept that was executed a little bit better in Chappie. I feel like this is the movie that was the prequel for Chappie, or this was the rough draft for what Chappie had become. The expat and the other guys end up getting away, at least some of them do, and it's not like it matters. Are they going to go back to the States where the government's never going to let them get a word out because you know the government controls the media? So even if they came out with their story, who's going to believe them? They're just going to be dubbed conspiracy theorists and they're going to be deplatformed on whatever place they try to speak on and then people are going to find them and their families and end their lives. So I don't really see how going back to the States would be a good thing unless you're living totally off-grid, but you still have to get your passport to go back in anyway. How was that gonna, I don't even I don't see how that's a happy ending to be honest. The number three robot had upgrades and now can move a lot faster so that he can take down number four. The Navy SEALs guy can't move properly because number four, the one who was trying to find out why he existed and what he was, had stepped on his leg when he didn't understand he was hurting him. Little boy Leap had to tell him, get off him, you're hurting him. And the robot's like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know it's stepping on something's freaking foot that was soft and squishy could hurt it. Remember, the robot doesn't even know what he is to even know what his strength is. Fuck! By the way, that's all this guy gets paid to do in this entire movie. Like, 90% of his screen time is him having a freaking aneurysm. Ah! Ah! In a last ditch effort, number four decides to save the humans. He holds back Johnny Bravo guy, or evil Johnny Bravo as I called him. By the way, he had to go there to put the module in number three. Listen, you really should watch the movie. It's an amazing movie. I'm just giving you the rundowns of it and my review, but there's so many details in there. You'll probably enjoy watching this movie. You can buy or rent it on YouTube. Oh my God, it talks. Yes, of course it talks. It taught itself to talk. I They always had the programming to talk, but they just never did that with the first test. It's, it's so funny how they make these things. And they always have them operating at like 10% when they have the capability to operate at like 1,000. It's hilarious because it's like having a car and the car is fine. You drive the car to work. You take the car mudding. You do whatever you want to do with the car. I don't know why you take your car mudding unless it's like a freaking four-wheeler. But as far as you know, it's your car. And then some shit happens. And then you realize that the car doors are actually freaking wings that can lift you into the air. And then the car can lay eggs and you can get like puppies fused with cars that can go into the mountains and talk to people up there that you didn't even know existed that are a completely different species and you realize they're aliens and the car had all these capabilities and so much more. And with every different circumstance, the car evolves, unlocking a part of it that was in it the entire time that could have been activated, but it was just lying dormant in there because the programmers or the people who made the car didn't see it fit to tell people it was in there. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, these are the first tested robots that can do these things. And you'd think that they would come out with a prototype or something to test that they make later models. But no, instead of doing that, just for the sake of pushing drama along with this movie, the robots are all flimsy. But no, wait, there's more. They can be upgraded to move even faster. Oh, wait, there's more. But they can talk. Oh, wait, but more. you can install Ninja on that. Like, that's not what you said before. Like... <laughs> 
different if it didn't have the AI cap. Like if they didn't have the AI cap, they could learn better. But, you know, whatever. Let's just write it off because it's sci-fi. But that's what I mean. It kind of felt like they were making things up as they went along for the sake of pushing the thrill. <laughs> oh, you had that in the entire time and you chose not to use it? You had that in the entire time and you were alongside the other robot that was still working for you and you didn't give that to the robot and be like, hey, take that thing out. Really, bruh? Really, bro? <sighs> anyway, evil Johnny Bravo thought that he got away, but of course, number four conveniently came back online after that and blew him up anyway. And you may be thinking, geez, we barely got any character growth with number four. I want to see what happens to him. That's not all, because number four, just like at the end of Chappie, I don't care if I spoil it. The movie has been out for a very long time. You should watch it still. Go ahead. You've been given enough time. He uploads himself to some other robots in the factory back in the States, and he has himself a new body. Don't know how he's going to get away with doing his own thing, unless he's going to hack all the other robots, too. But I can see this being the beginnings to the Matrix, since these robots kind of look like the spider machine things. It was a good movie with a temporary happy ending, sort of. I, I really love this movie. This movie was freaking amazing. And I think you guys should support it by giving it some of your money. They didn't pay me to say this, I promise you. But it was by an independent creator, like... The independent films are really nice because they don't have all of that big movie studio corporation shit hanging over their heads. I mean, it may be like that later on, but they're independent production companies. So it's kind of like independent creators on YouTube instead of like these news things that are being protected by the platform. That's what we should support so we can get more stuff like this that, yeah, I know it's not a new concept and it probably wasn't the best executed concept, but it was a fun ride. It was a really nice experience. And I could always use more robot movies with AI. I'm guessing this movie was also a word to the wise. This was a really fun adventure. It was a long adventure and I tried to make it long. Well, I didn't actually try to make it long. I was literally enjoying myself and getting away with it. And I looked at the time of the video. I was like, shit, it's a little bit long, isn't it? it took me like, what, three days to make this video. But I figured you guys said you like the longer adventure. So... I bled this out of me. Plus, I really did like this movie, so I spent way more time on it because it's really, really nice. I did enjoy it despite me making fun of it. So if you guys enjoyed this, please let us know in the comments what you enjoyed about it, what they could have done better. Constructive criticism is always a good thing. And you can also buy or rent it on YouTube. Have fun with that. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Altiori. You ask, we answer.